ECODE is the part of ECPAD International's uh, SECTT program that focuses on working with the tourism industry, particularly tourism and travel companies, to prevent the sexual exploitation of children in the context of travel and tourism. So what the code does is we ask the member companies to implement six criteria. And we think these are reasonably accessible and, and easily understood without companies needing to become specialists in the field of child protection. And uh, we at the Secretariat and local code representatives are there to support companies in learning more and being able to implement their six criteria. So the first is to have a policy and procedures on child protection. It sounds quite simple, but many companies haven't thought about inc including child protection as part of their standard operating procedures or their employee manual or their policies and procedures. Uh, so in making sure that preventing uh, sexual exploitation of children as part of those policy and procedures is the first thing we ask. And not just having it written down on paper, but having the support from management so that a staff member, if they think they see a, a situation where a child is in danger, feels empowered and supported to report that suspicion without fear of retribution for if, if it's not a case of actual exploitation, but if they just had a suspicion, they're not going to be held negatively accountable for that. Uh, they're going to be supported in the fact that they did the right thing by reporting a suspicion. The second criteria is to provide training for staff members. So this is all types of staff from front of house at a hotel to cabin attendants on an air, airplane to travel agents and tour operators on the ground, basically to inform them about the issue of sexual exploitation of children and to make them aware of what they can look out for and how they might respond if there's a situation in which they think a child is in danger. The third is to work with the supply chain. So working through uh, subcontractors and suppliers to ensure that they're aware of this issue and are also being positive in taking steps to avoid children being placed at risk. The fourth is to provide information to travellers. So we're not necessarily talking about volunteerism specifically here, but all travellers and tourists to have access to information about the issue to kind of make it something that's uh, people are able to talk about openly, but also to empower the, the customers to be able to do something if they see something that, that is out of place and to know how to report, whether that's to the business that they're working with, whether it's to the local child protection hotline, it varies in different places and in different circumstances. The fifth criteria is to uh, work with other stakeholders. So this might be if you're a hotel, working with the local transportation providers, with the local restaurants and bars, with the local uh, tour operators and travel agents to help them become aware of this child protection approach. Uh, and to join together to, to ensure the safety of children. Uh, often this comes in the form of um, an industry association or a location, essentially all the, the companies there pledging to take measures on child protection. And that sometimes means becoming a member of the code. Often it doesn't. Uh, the main goal is child protection in the end. <coughs> and the final criteria for the code is to provide a brief annual report back to the Secretariat so that we get a global picture of the contribution that the travel and tourism industry is making because it is significant and it is important to recognise that this isn't just an issue for NGOs and law enforcement, but it's an issue for the, the whole industry of travel and tourism, uh, both companies and, and their staff, the, sorry, their customers and their staff to take action. We do have additional criteria for those member companies that are involved in any forms of volunteerism. So the first is a, a declaration um, of non-involvement with orphanage tourism. And so this is something that the, the company, whether it's signing in Netherlands or Germany or in India or anywhere else, that is a member of the code, signs this declaration to undertake that they're not involved in orphanage tourism in any way. With this, I just want to show you some pictures of how, how it is done in India now. We have a commitment document which been which is on the on the on the left hand side, which has been signed by the by the tourism service providers who are having these services or have done the services in past without knowing that this was actually part of the volunteerism as a as a as a product but they have entertained or they have been responding to tourists who are coming and asking for uh, you know the, a visit to an orphanage or 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 a school or a village or a slum or sometime to a street children corner the second is child protection measures in place 
um, both for member companies who are sending and also partner organizations that they were, they're working with. And again, this goes back to, to what Jayatri said, it gives empowerment um, to report um, and to help reduce the risk of children being exploited, um, either sexually exploited or emotionally or physically exploited in those settings to have a policy and response mechanisms in place. The criminal record or similar background check to be done for volunteers before they leave uh, on their trip. What is screening? Uh, screening is a tool to limit the integrity risk and the risk of re recurrence of abuses and to help employers select and hire reliable employees. It is a part of risk management to make sure that your, uh, that, th that your work that you are providing for children is safe for the children <clears throat> and also uh, to make sure that, um, yeah, that, that your organization has a good image and will not become in the news uh, as, as the yeah, examples that I mentioned before. The checklist for as part of a hiring policy well, make sure that the screening is announced as part of the application procedure so that everybody is aware that uh, screening takes place. Uh, the potential volunteers passport and ID uh, in identification card is genuine. The diplomas and list of experience are convincing. The references are checked. Um, there are no suspicious messages found on social media or internet. Make sure that you can also not use every information that you find on the internet. Some, especially for instance on Facebook, some uh, images uh, could be meant as private because some people don't really know how to make their account private. Uh, LinkedIn, you can uh, use everything on LinkedIn, but sometimes uh, yeah, you cannot use everything in your assessment because some yeah, messages or images are meant to be private. Uh, the volunteer completes and signs his uh, integrity statement as part uh, of the child protection policy. And any findings have been discussed with the potential volunteer. Um, and if necessary, a cert certificate of good uh, conduct will be issued uh, at, uh, yeah, at the Jurisdictional Documentation Center. So these are just some checklists for hiring uh, new uh, uh, volunteers that that organization could use. That's associated them with an undertaking of good conduct to be signed by the volunteers to ensure that they've, um, they're firmly and consciously committed to not in, take any inappropriate activities with children and to follow the rules and procedures of the company that's sending them and also the institution that's hosting them. Um, there's also a requirement for information to be provided to volunteers. So where there's activities that involve direct engagement with children like teaching, like supervised teaching, this includes um, <clears throat> provision before leaving of uh, training on child protection issues and maybe some of the, the local cultural or legal uh, sensitivities that the, that the volunteers might find themselves in. Um, and even if it's not directly involving uh, ch activities uh, teaching children, for example, we at least ask for companies before the uh, customers depart to provide information on child protection issues, the, the context of the country that they're going to visit, and the sort of things that they could do if they see a situation in which a child might be at risk. Um, we also ask that the host organisations provide feedback after the trip is over um, to give feedback on what went well, what could be improved, anything that was missed in terms of information provided, if there are areas for improvement or concern, <coughs> just so that it's not a, a piece of paper that gets signed and then forgotten about. It's an iterative process with feedback from, from the host uh, organisations as well. And then we also ask for some of this information to be shared as part of the annual report from code members, um, just so again, we can get a picture of what companies are doing in the volunteerism field and to try and make sure that they're, they're following their commitments. If we look at that, what are the measures being taken now? Now, since we have seen this in our, in our country, in our places, uh, the measures that really worked is having child protection policies. Uh, in, in most of the destinations that we work, which is across the country, around 21 destinations, but we work with the tourism service providers and tourism facility owners 
where we were able to have child protection policy for even for the guide associations, street vendor associations, you know, uh, look in the look at the you know the uh, the 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 local transporters, you know, and also been able to train them into looking at what kind of what are their accountability, what are their you know responsibilities, and as part of that, if you see on my on the on the right hand side of the of the slide. This is a declaration that that comes out from this process where they say that they condemn sexual they condemn child exploitation in any form, including sexual exploitation, and they provide the provide the child helpline numbers. Now, what happens because of this is that that the person who is coming, one is the accountability of the tourism sector themselves taking responsibility and taking accountability of the service that they're providing and they're ensuring that their services and their facilities are not being misused by, by the traveling sex, uh, child sex offenders. Another thing that happened is very important and that we figured out, which which I think uh, you know Josephine highlighted the law and order situations and the and the, the lack of laws. So in these various uh, destinations at the grass to, at the at the destination level, government have been able to issue orders, say uh, stating that the tourism facilities have to adhere to the child protection measures. Now, why is it possible to have this government order? Because there is an act called POXO, which is Prevention of Sexual Offences of uh, of Children, and that act enables the government to to have destination level orders to ensure that the tourism facility orders and the and the you know uh, and the accommodation units can adhere to these child protection measures. If they do not, then there is a penalty and 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 also there is a punitive action. The law is very clear that they will be penalized for not uh, not adhering to the to the child protection measures so a law which enables the government and the other service providers and the stakeholders to actually implement certain child protection policies which is an enabler towards preventing child sexual exploitation in any form uh, other thing that has that we found is very useful to look at is a multi stakeholder uh, or or or, or, a, or a multidisciplinary team to address child protection. As you see here, it says that child protection is everyone's responsibility. We found that this was very helpful, where this multi-stakeholder team is team actually represents youth representative, uh, you know, government representatives, tourism sector, uh, service providers, um, you know, law, 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 uh, law enforcement officers, and and also the village elders, those who have a capacity to influence what is happening in the destination. For the volunteers, it is important that they understand the context of volunteering. They have a clear idea about what they're contributing and for whom, have a definite outcome, and also to know what the do's and don'ts while we are volunteering. For the for the particular travel agency or travel operator or the or the you know, tourism facilitator. Uh, it is important to be prepared because then you are prepared to raise alarm. If you see a safeguarding risk or violation of child rights, you, you as a volunteer or as a manager of the volunteerism will be are part of this fight against child sexual exploitation travel and tourism. You are reducing the risk of children. You are becoming becoming a reputable uh, you know, corporate uh, company. You are becoming an accountable company and you're ensuring that your services and facilities are not being misused. Volunteers are asking us frequently why why is there a need? Um, we don't understand um, this. Um, um, we we come to help, um, and um, you warn us uh, or you 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 yeah you 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 show us um, childhood policies, and this gives us an impression that your former volunteers were um, yeah taking over and abuse children. So what is it about? And um, so it takes some time to um, yeah, to to bring the right understanding uh, for the topic. And it's not so easy. Um, and we have the best results um, to make um, to bring understanding for childhood protection um, when we provide seminars for volunteers. These seminars, uh, unfortunately, they are not mandatory. Uh, because uh, we, yeah, we, we were discussing this for for some time now. Um, if we shall 
step forward um, and make it mandatory for volunteers to participate in a, a seminar before they can uh, participate in a program abroad. But the interest and the motivation for a volunteer uh, is, is limited for the seminars. So only 20% um, do show interest. So when they when they finish with the school, um, they they yeah they don't have so much interest to sit down again, listen. It's, it's like a school feeling, or they are they're in a rush. They need to organize so many things, and um, these are the 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 answers we hear that drives them away of participating. Um, so this is one difficulty. The second difficulty is um, within our team members, like the, the, the Rainbow Garden Village stuff. Let's put it in that way. Uh, Rainbow Garden Village is um, in, in that way organized that we are not working with any incoming agency in, the, in, the, in uh, our countries that we are working with, but we have our own teams on site and we can teach them, we can coach them and we can organize things we can create our own structures so this is a benefit but when it comes to um, the, the topic of code of uh, of childhood protection is also difficult because they also don't understand why is there a need so it, there's also a kind of um, work for us uh, uh, ongoing work in, in uh, highlighting this topic also to our teams so that if there is a topic for a volunteer on site that uh, a volunteer can uh, approach uh, our team and they know how to um, yeah to handle this you need to be open enough to go to our team and our team needs to be open and sensitive enough to receive um, a, a, a certain signal or warning and so this this is the 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 field we are into we are working with and um so what we what we are doing is, uh, and I, I'm sure I, this is not enough, but twice a year we we have the childhood protection on our agenda when we have uh, online calls with all our teams abroad. And these are 60 60 people worldwide <clears throat> participating, and uh, and there we highlight and renew the information and uh, the importance of uh, of the childhood uh, protection. Um, a third very big uh, problem for us is uh, if a volunteer was approached by a certain topic that a child uh, got uh, beaten um, or got uh, abused or anything in, in that direction, they find it so difficult to open up and talk about it. Um, and I still, I still don't understand exactly um, why they find it so difficult to open up when they are on site. When we get to know about such a case, if a case was happening or a volunteer heard about something, they report this to us when they are back home. And I think this is very important that if, if, if a case is, is there, um, that that um, that we can act in time and not um, when the volunteer returns back home. <laughs>